So, like I said, so my first, figured I'd tell you a little background about me since it wasn't in the, the program. Uh, so my husband and I, we've got 250 breeding ewes. We're just about half an hour from here over in Mount Sterling. So where I kind of got started into sheep, um, when I was younger, I worked for a lot of other individuals who had sheep and goats. So that's kind of where I got my start. I came to Moorhead. I came here for my bachelor's as well as my master's. Um, left for a little while, came back to work. Um, I worked here at the university farm as a technician and helped manage their sheep herd, which is going to be, I don't know where else, there we go. So these three, these are the ones Dr. Prater was talking about, a few of their individuals. Um, and then the other ones over here, so these are my little kids at the house. So record keeping of all the things that, you know, Patricia could have asked me to talk about, I can tell you all kinds of things. I've done it right, I've done it wrong, I've learned off of everybody else. So hopefully you can learn off some of the mistakes I've learned from others as well as the ones I've made myself. Um, and maybe you'll learn something a little extra, some other ways to keep track of your records, to utilize them. That's probably the biggest thing I've ever seen is how to actually utilize our records in a way um, that's really easy for us. So we'll get started. So why, first of all, do we even need to keep records? Um, you know, sometimes we feel like if we've got smaller herds. You know, the herd here at Moorhead is only around 40 head. You know, my herd is around 250. So, you know, why do we need to keep records? Well, one, we need proof. Our memory is not a very reliable tool. Even if we don't have very many, if you're like me, by the time a couple weeks pass, sometimes a couple days, or even a couple hours, depending on what I had to do between morning and afternoon, I think back and I'm like, who was that? What did, what did I do? What did I give her? You know, which lamb was hers? So it's really, really good to have things recorded so that we can remember later on. Or three years from now, when I look at this you and I'm like, you know, you look really familiar and I feel like I've, I've like done something with you before. Look it back up, okay? Our memory is not good. Decision tools, okay? So if we have a record of how they've performed in the past, that can better help us to make good decisions in the future. Has she worked well for us? If she hasn't, maybe we won't want to keep her females. If she's done really well from year to year, you know, those are the ones we want to keep. Okay, institutional requirements. We're all required to have scrapey tags. We need to keep track of that information before they leave the farm. Uh, tax purposes, you know, are we paying too much in taxes? Are we paying too little? We want to keep track of our costs, um, things that we're feeding, you know, our tags that we're purchasing, um, anything like that to help us out in taxes, as well as our income. Uh, environmental regulations, this is something that's becoming more and more common. It's really hit the cattle people hard, um, but it's not too far behind us either. You know, are they drinking out of the creeks? Are they drinking out of ponds? Do we have automatic waterers? Are we spreading fertilizer if we've got things in a barn? Um, are we spreading manure on our field? So we need to kind of keep track of that type of information. Um, and then marketing. If we've got proof of our records and the performance of our animals, you know, that's an even better marketing tool. If you want to sell feeders, what better way than to say, I've got records of average daily gains post weaning. I know exactly how these animals are going to perform for you when you take them home. So maybe we can get a few more cents per pound if we've got those records to kind of back up our animals. So the decision making, it has been proven to take 20 to 30 times longer to obtain a unit of improvement Okay, if we're just going off of appearance. But if we can go off of appearance plus production records, we can make improvements in our herd a lot faster. So there's no best system. So you really just got to find one that works for you. You've got to decide what do I want to improve and you've got to decide how much time do I have to invest, what type of you know, program do I want to use, do I want handwritten, do I want computerized, you know, what, what do I need to look at? So there's really no best system. We've just kind of got to, you know, play with a little bit and, you know, see where it leads us. So first off, you know, what, what do we need to be recording, okay? Animal identification. We've got to be able to identify our animals. There's no way to remember what they've done, okay, if we don't know who they are. When you start getting more and more, maybe you collect them like I do, then eventually you've you got to have something written down on them. Okay, origin records, did we purchase them, okay, did we raise them ourselves, if we raised them ourselves, who are, who's their family history, who was the sire and dam, who, you know, were the grandparents, that's good information, that'll give us a good indicator also of how they're going to perform in the future, okay, then those actual production records, 
when was the breeding dates? When was the lambing dates? Okay, did she have twins? Did she have singles? Did she have triplets? Okay, that sort of information. Weaning weights, regular herd health. This is one most of us tend to put quite a bit of you know emphasis on. Um, you know, when we dewormed, did we have to deworm her an extra time? You know, it's something we all kind of fight with sometimes. So we need to keep track of that sort of information. And then also, like I said before, our income and our expenses. How much feed are we putting out there? You know, are we having to treat with antibiotics? Are we, you know, having to, you know, how much do we spend in mineral products? So the identification. You know, we'd all love it if everything was permanent, but it's not always very practical. Okay, so at the least, it needs to be pretty resistant to loss or tearing. Um, so in my herd, all of mine keep two tags, okay? The reason being, you know, if a couple months pass before I get them all back up, out of 250 ewes, it's not uncommon for five of them to have, you know, lost some tags, okay? When five of the, you know, I made this mistake once, they come in, went through the herd, I had five of them pulled off to the side, and then I was like, all right, it's the guessing game, like, who is who? Because I want to give them their correct number back, you know, so all my records are accurate. So, you know, I look in the book, and ours are kind of an assortment of colors at least. So I look at one, and I'm like, all right, there's a brown you, so that's definitely you. Okay, give her her tag. You know, then there's maybe a black and white one. Give her her tag. And then I'm left with three white ones. One, I'm like, okay, well, she's three. All right, so I could identify that one. Then I'm left with two. I'm like, same age, same color. So it's kind of a guessing game. Like, who are you? So I keep two tags. Generally, a farm tag, their second one is the scrapey tag. Works out really well. They got to have the scrapey tag anyways one day. So that's kind of my, my second. So if one falls out, I know who the other is. MSU, you know, we traditionally always just did one tag. But there aren't near as many of them. It's easier to see, okay, she lost her tag. I can actually catch them pretty easily. You know, they come into the barn to eat on a regular basis. Mine are all out on pasture. Okay, so if one loses a tag, you know, we catch her, we look her up, we put one back in. So you've got to kind of figure out something like that that works best for you that's not working you to death. It needs to be easy to read from a distance, preferably. This is really helpful during, you know, the lambing and kidding season so that we know, you know, because some of them we can't get very close to if they're out on pasture. Um, so we need to know who they are so when we tag their lambs, we can record that information as well. Um, needs to be easy to apply, you know, which most of them anymore are. Um, but if it's not, if it's something that's a little complicated, we're probably not going to stay very consistent with it. So it needs to be something that's, you know, kind of user friendly. Um, and again, there's so many options out there. Um, they've got different sizes, different colors. You can color code your lambs. Um, so we've got so many, we kind of color code boy and girl. So girls are all, you know, one color, boys are all the other. And the numbers are just, you know, kind of go through them. So, you know, the color just helps us from a distance say, you know, well, that's a male, that's weather over there. So you can find something that works for you. Find a color that stands out against what other, you know, whatever color your, your animals are. Um, you know, and the prices range. So you can really find something to your personal preference. Okay, those origin records, okay, those are really important. Okay, we need the family tree. Okay, but we also need to keep track of those scrapey tags. Um, so I pulled this from the website. So if you didn't know, okay, we are required, we're supposed to be keeping track of those scrapey tag numbers. What animal do they identify to? Most of us don't really apply them until they leave the farm, right? So that way if they, they don't lose them. They're written really little, they're hard to read, they're not really a good identification tool from a distance. Um, they just have to have them. So. You've got to keep track of that information for, I think it said, five years. Okay, it's just a trace back okay, technique. So that if later on down the road something happened, you know, that animal got sick, it's a way to trace it back. So if you purchased it, you need to know what farm did it come from, how long did you have it, you know, and you've got its scrapey tag number. Okay, if it's one that you raised, again, you've kind of got some family history on it. So that's that's kind of where we stand our what we are responsible for doing. We, we need to know who those animals are um, and how long we had them. And hopefully that'll never, nobody will ever come to your farm for something like that. Production records, okay? So these are generally pretty easy. Most of us probably keep track of this stuff. Um, it's just what do we do with it when we're done? So 
MSU's got a binder. Everything lambs inside in the barn, okay, because they're kind of lambing right now. So it's really easy. They work up a lamb, they record it all down. We've got the sire, the dam, the date of birth, you know, the sex, um, identifying it as a single, a twin, or a triplet. So I've got a little book. We're usually driving around the field. So in our little book, we've got columns, very similar to this, kind of similar to the, the little books I've got over there. So that way we can write everything down. Again, my memory from the field to the house, I would never remember. I'd be like, I have no idea what that number was. I'll mix them all up. Okay, so I write things down immediately in that book. That book stays in the side beside with all the tags and the, you know, the tools that I need until the end of the season. So keep track of all this information. Keep it, okay? Other comments that you can create, um, you know, depending on what information you want to track, okay? The birthing ease. Did you have to pull a lamb? If you had to pull a lamb, how hard did you have to pull a lamb? Was it just, oh, the, you know, the leg was pulled back a little bit or it was coming out backwards and I really had to do a lot of work to get that lamb out of her. That's good information. Later on, at the end of the season, when I'm going through who do I want to cull and get rid of, I might look at the one that I had to pull really hard and say, you know, one, maybe she had a really big lamb. Has she ever done this before? You know, am I worried about scarring? Maybe she won't breed back. You know, that might be a good decision-making tool. Okay, if it was just, you know, well, her leg was back a little bit, maybe I'll, I'll err on the side of caution and say, I'll give you another shot, I'll let you stay. But without having wrote that down, I might remember back, well, I pulled one of those lambs, and, I, you know, I pulled really hard, but I really couldn't tell you who it was. So write it down. You know, don't leave it to chance. Write it down. Um, the maternal ability. This is one I make a lot of notes on. You know, we did it for MSU, too. She has to raise all of her babies. It's not good enough to raise one. She's got to want them both. Some do better at this than others. So there's no exceptions to rules when I look through my herd. Um, you know, if she has twins, I expect her to raise twins. I don't want to see one of them keep getting lost by itself because she only wants to keep up with one of them. Okay? If I have to, I'll take it to the house and make a bottle lamb out of it, but I really don't want to do that. Okay? So I'm going to make those notes. If that happens a second time, she, she's gone for me. Okay? Sometimes I'll kind of give her the benefit of the doubt and say, maybe you got separated from it. You know, maybe you didn't get very strongly bonded, but you know, maybe it's your lamb that keeps wandering away. You get one shot, okay? and then for me, I'm, I'm done. But if we don't record that, we'll never know the next year you know, that it happened again. The size and the vigor of the young, you know, is it a good, healthy one? If something does die later on, it's good to know, well, it was born, it was kind of puny, I made a note of that. Uh, maybe that leaves me less, you know, second guessing what happened. Was it mom, you know, was it the weather? If I made a note that it was already not a very thrifty lamb, you know, it at least makes, makes me feel better. And then the breeding, if we're cross-breeding, we might want to keep track of that. Some other things, if you have enough time, <laughs> you know, to take birth weights is wonderful. We take birth weights at MSU. Um, I do not. I wish I could. I don't have time. But I do always kind of make note. You know, I always hope that all my lambs are a pretty average weight. So I'll make note of this is a really hefty lamb. You know, this is a really good size one. It's a little above average. Or I'll make note, this one's really small. It's really below average. So at least I kind of have those recorded. Um, MSU, we actually have the pounds. We weigh every lamb. Um, so that's awesome. If you can weigh them, it's a great, great tool. Um, then later on, if you can do a weaning weight, which that's a little easier. You know, we're already bringing them through to sort them out from their mothers. Okay? Now if you have those, if you have a birth weight and a weaning weight, now you can do average daily gains. We can really put to paper who is the most productive. So at weaning time, the influence on that lamb's that lamb's growth is coming majority from the mother, okay, her ability to produce milk. Now, we can have influenced that a little bit with how much we feed her, okay, but that's, that's all on her, okay. Later on, if we can take, you know, 120-day weight, now we have, you know, we can put to paper what is her post-weaning gain, okay. That's getting more genetic. So if we're going to hold on to our lambs and put some, you know, or our kids, put some weight on them, Okay, then we can look to see who's gaining the best. What are the average daily gains when I'm putting the feed to them? Okay, those are the genetics we want to keep. So many, anything else that we want to take uh, track of? 
if we've recorded this information, okay, now we have our, our lambing and kidding rates. You know, are we sitting at the 1.3? Are we at 1.5? Are we at 1.7? Okay, how do we know we're doing well if we don't really know how many we had, okay? And then from there, we need to know how many we lost, okay? If some of them, you know, died, make note of what it was. Were we fighting pneumonia, okay? Was mom not making enough milk? Some things we can influence. Maybe we can get them somewhere dry to get to uh, if it's a time of the year that it's really damp. Maybe we can feed a little bit more to influence some of the milk production. Okay, but if we don't have it recorded at the end of the year, again, sometimes our memory, we're like, oh, I feel like I did awful, I feel like this didn't go well. But if we put it to paper, you're like, well, my death loss wasn't, was only like 1%, so maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Okay, so don't rely on your memory. <laughs> Conception rates, you know, when we put the, the males out, how many females actually got pregnant? Those are good numbers, you know, to know. You know, we can influence that with some of the environmental, you know, how fleshy were they going into the breeding season? Um, so keep track of those numbers. Again, the average daily gain. So if you've got all these numbers, okay, the computerized programs are amazing that they've come up with, okay? There's free ones out there. There's some that you can pay for, okay? Make a, a yearly fee to. If you're really good with Excel, okay, you can make your own. Um, the, the key is to back it up. So usually if you pay a program, um, they kind of have a backup. Um, but if you are doing yours on Excel, you're going to keep track of it yourself. Um, just make sure you know how to back up for your information so that if your computer crashes, um, there's something there. So MSU, we don't use one. We've been looking into some of the different ones. We really want to computerize ours. Um, our SALs, though, we actually have a computer program for our SAL herd here. It is amazing, okay? They've had it for 20 years, I think and it goes, all their records go back that far. We got rid of the paper copies 10 years ago, you know, from the first 10 years of that herd. The computer has crashed three or four times. <laughs> Great thing is we get the new computer, we get it all set up, you call up, you know, it's Pig, Pig Champ is the name, and we're like, hey, we got a new computer. A few clicks of their keyboard, 20 years worth of records reappear, okay? So we've got a hold of those. So we keep our paper copies for quite some time, but eventually we're like, never going to refer back to these genetics again. Uh, but it's still good information. We don't want to lose that information. You know, that is our herd. Um, so these, these are wonderful. And they'll do a lot of the formulas for you. So if, you, if you're taking the birth weights and the weaning weights and uh, post-gain weights, they'll, you have, all you have to do is put it in, click a button, and it'll say, here's all your, your babies in order of who did the best and who did the worst. You know, which they'll take the mothers. You can click a button. It'll say, this is your best performing females, you know, based on uh, lamb weaning weights. This is your best performing female based on conception rates. So, you know, it does the work for you. So they're really, really nice. So I was going through, and I was like, you know, I'll, I'll collect some of the better ones that we've looked into. Um, and there's so many of them. And then I ran across this site. And this, I've seen this site before. The Maryland Small Roomnet page. I'm sorry, I didn't have the PowerPoints printed off for you guys. I wasn't quite prepared. Um, they did an amazing job of putting together probably the top 15 or 20. Um, some of it, and it'll say, it gives you a short description um, of their program. It tells whether it's a free one. Probably half of them were on there were free. And it tells you, you know, the ones that you do pay for, you know, it was $15 a year, $45 a year. So... If you want to kind of look into some, that's, that was the web page for that. I'll give everybody a second to kind of write it down. So the other problem that we have in, ran into, and one of the problems we kind of um, did here was, and, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty, I'm the one that was, you know, helping to manage this herd, is we had binders of, of all this information. We'd taken birth weights and weaning weights. You know, we were recording when we were doing all of our dewormings. We did fecal egg counts with vet tech. So the time would come, though, and, and we thought we were doing really good. If she didn't get bred every year, you know, she got cold the moment she was open. You know, we thought we were being really unforgiving. But then we realized we didn't really have, you know, our individual females, per, you know, every year production on one page. So we'd have to pull up old binders, flip through and say, okay, what did she do last year? Okay. 
Well, like two years ago, what did she do? How many lambs did she have? What, did, what was their average daily gain? So that was kind of what we ran into was, um, you know, how do we utilize it so that we're not working ourselves to death to look it up? Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So other things we need to keep track of. So herd health. So I always kind of write down the dates. You know, most of the time we do things in a routine. Everybody gets up one day and everybody's getting dewormed, okay? Maybe they're getting their feet trimmed at the same time. So keep track of that. Write the date. What I always do is I have, I've bought stock in those yellow legal pads. You know, I'll write the date and I'll say what I'm doing that day and then I just start listing animals' numbers as they go through, okay? Anybody who has extra notes, I'll put it next to her. You know, her feet were exceptionally bad. You know, we dewormed everybody, but, you know, maybe her FAMACHA score was horrible, so I, I made note of that, okay? I always say that goes on her permanent record. <laughs> so on her page in my record book, I record that, you know, that there was an extra note about her. If it's outside of the normal window, okay, I had to get her up by herself, you know, a couple weeks later and deworm her again, okay? Those are things we want to make note of. We don't want the animals that, you know, cause us extra work. So make note, you know, if you had to get her up and trim her feet again. Make note if you had to deworm her outside of the normal window, okay? I'll take body condition scores. We had ours up about a month ago to get them vaccinated um, and dewormed preparing for our lambing season. So anybody that was, you know, maybe below what I would prefer, I made a note of her body condition score. You know, it was really easy. Right now it's hard to see. They're all fluffy and, you know, they're, they're nice and warm for the winter. So we had our hands on them and I was like, you know, you're, you're a lot thinner than I would have preferred, okay? If I had had to, I could sort some off separately to feed them a little differently. I don't want to do that, but I could. Um, and I did a few. Most of them were older. You know, they were kind of aging out. They weren't handling the winter as well as they, you know, some of the younger ones. Um, I'll let them lamb, and I'll honestly, if it's age-related, I'll probably go ahead and cull them after the lambing season, you know, rather than risk my luck and see if she gets bred back. But make note of those things. When they go into the lambing season, who was the first to lamb? That means she was like the first to get bred. Who was the last? Are they way outside the breeding window? You know, do we leave the rams out for an extra long time? Okay. We don't want the one that took three breedings to finally get bred, okay? We might let her stay and have that lamb, but if we have room on the trailer, maybe we'll kind of let her go and be replaced by somebody that's a little more productive. So all our other things we need to keep track of, you know, what are you purchasing? How much feed and mineral? We get to put this down. We get to take this off, you know, for our um, expenses when we file our farm taxes. So this is great information. I have a little bucket in the house that literally I just throw receipts and eventually at the end of the year I sort through them. Um, you know, remember, you know, I, I've, I've got the one for the fuel too. Pasture maintenance, you know, fuel that you're buying for bush hogging. If you're doing any seeding and fertilize, you know, keep all of those receipts, okay? That's going to help us out on taxes. Any supplies you have to purchase, all those tags, okay? Any kind of um, vaccines, um, vitamins, you know, keep all that stuff. Um, regular herd health supplies, um, tools, if you had to buy a new bander, you know, keep those things. And then our sale receipts. So I really try hard to write down, once everybody's sold, um, I try to give a short description on the back of, you know, the receipt that I get back, you know, what did I sell? What was it, you know, if it doesn't say it, what was their average weight, okay? If I want to make any notes about them, you know, were these coals, were these lambs, were these fat lambs, were these light lambs, okay? What was the going market price at the time if it doesn't say it? So if you go to some of the local markets to sell, usually this is already going to be on your receipt. But if you're selling off the farm, you know, this is, this is something that's not written down for us. So make note of it because it might be something I can refer back to Whenever I, I'm trying to estimate how much do I think I'm going to make this year, um, you know, what time of year is it? What did I make last year? What was the going rate? Um, so write that stuff down. Um, are you selling them as replacement females, okay, or breeding males? Okay, that's going to change the price. And then obviously the coal. So if we've got all that information, then we've got, you know, we're prepared for our tax season. 
your ta if you don't do your taxes, your tax person will be really, really happy if you at least have it kind of organized for them. Okay. If you want to obtain credit, if you want to go borrow money to expand the farm, buy some more breeding herd, okay, buy new equipment, whoever's lending you money wants to see, you know, how are you able to repay this if I lend you money? So if we've got records that say, you know, these are my conception rates, these are my, my lambing and kidding rates, this is what I made last year, this is what I've made for the last five years. If you can prove what you've done from year to year, you know, you're, you're a good liability. They're like, okay, you've done great. You've got all the records showing how you've done. You know, you're a good investment. I would love to give you some money because I'm going to make some back off of you. So it helps tremendously. And then planning. Again, if you want to expand, if you're wanting to, um, you know, plan some repairs, maybe you need to invest in some new fencing. If you can estimate how much do I need for my payment, if I need to make a farm payment, how much do I need to set aside for expenses? You know, you should be able to kind of estimate based on your production for the year what you'll have left over to invest back into some repairs. Y'all just tell me if I need to slow down. So samples. So, and I can't claim to come up with these. So we did a lot of, you know, Pinterest searches, internet searches, and we tried to find something that we liked. So this is actually what I use for my herd at the house. Okay, on the back side of it, it looks like a legal pad. It's just got a bunch of lines, and that's where I can make those notes of, you know, I had to trim her feet. I don't like to trim feet. When mine come in, I really make a note of I have to trim their feet. Okay, so I'll make note of that. I had to deworm her outside of the normal routine. So that way, I don't really have to remember. If I have to write it down again, I'm going to see, hey, I did this to you once before. Like, now we need to have a discussion about this. Like, what are, what are we going to do? Okay. But all I need for my information initially, okay, I've got the lamb ID, okay, I'll know if she had twins or triplets, okay, or a single, I'll write that down, because all three will be listed, the date of birth, okay, what did I write on, I think it's the sire, so what breeding group was she in, the sex of the babies, okay, and over here I've got the outcome, in the middle I've got the comment, up here I've got all of her information, so I've got her farm tag number, and I've left a little spot for her scrapey tag number, okay? That female's date of birth, um, you know, what breed is she? We initially started out, we had a couple different um, breeds influencing, so I had a spot for that. Um, I've left some spot for her family history that I can write in. Color, because some of, you know, in case I needed to try to find her, if she had an odd color to her. Um, and if we purchased her, you know, I said where, what farm did she come from? I ne left a nice little spot for a picture, and I just never made it that far. My rams have nice pictures, and my females just, they, they just got a blank spot. So this, you know, that, that's awesome. If you can add a picture, that's, that's amazing. Um, it's an easy way to kind of visually see them, especially if you want to match them up to a male. If you want to kind of, you know, improve some of your structural genetics, if you have an image of them, that, that helps. Um, but it looks just like this. So this is just one I've pulled off the internet. So every year I write down, you know, her newest set of babies, okay? At the end, I'll put the outcome. If it died, I'll write that. If I know why, you know, I'll include that maybe in the comments. You know, I might say in the comments, you know, this was a really big lamb, okay? Or I might say this, you know, she had triplets. You know, these two were pretty average. This one was like really little and kind of unthrifty. Um, so all those notes are important. It kind of makes us, you know, understand what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Because if that little tiny one died, then, you know, I might look back at that and be like, well, it probably wasn't the mother's fault. And, you know, maybe it wasn't very thrifty. I probably could have brought it in the barn. Maybe it would have had a better shot. You know, maybe I'll do something differently next time I find one that's kind of tiny like that. So where, one of the areas that I found that we were kind of lacking when we did MSUs, we put um, a sheet together for MSUs just like this, okay, was prior to that, all we had was those binders that we had to sort through. Am I running out of time? No, no. Okay. <laughs> we had those binders. So we'd have to sort through every year's binders to find all the lamb information, okay? So we put it all on one. It took a little bit of work initially, and that's the same thing with the computer programs. A lot of times the initial work is a lot, but once it's set up, it's just inputting, you know, the most recent data. So it's really easy after that. So 
this is one of the few that I could find. Hopefully Joe doesn't mind me showing her pictures. So we had this U. Most of ours look great, you know. But we had one U when I was putting this information in. She, she had been around for a while. It was, it was one similar to this. I don't even think I had all the information in. And it was like she had four or five lambing crops. And she had very consistently twinned. We were like, you know, that seems all great. But every year she lost a lamb for one reason or another. You know, this U kept getting to stay because we thought, you know, she's getting bred every year. You know, on paper we're like she has twins every year. And sometimes we see, well, you know, one died. Maybe it wasn't very thrifty. You know, maybe it got pneumonia. We won't hold that against her. It was really wet spring. Okay, but on paper when you're like, consistently you've lost one every single year okay that's not productive you know but we didn't really have all that information on one easy page and we kind of slacked and constantly looking up the information because it's a lot of work and we were, you know didn't really want to do it so on one page it's easy to see what are her her strengths and what are her flaws we had another one that we'd had for like eight years and we had literally kept like four of her females she had twins and triplets every year they all got sold and we were like Heck yeah, I'm glad I kept, you know, four of your females. You have just been super productive for us. So it works both ways. It lets us really see who was the best, and it really lets us see who's falling through the cracks and kind of, you know, costing us some money on the other side. So we need to be consistent, okay? It needs to be readable, okay? And it needs to be accessible. Accessible was, was the big problem. So everybody always says, you know, I don't have time. I don't have time to, you know, have some big elaborate system. My husband and I work two full-time jobs. We have our 250 head at the house, and we're building a house by ourselves because we are gluttons for punishment. Okay, I do not have time for a whole lot in my life. But what you do is you just kind of set aside time. If you take good notes, you know, when we go through the herd, when we went through a month ago and did our vaccinating and deworming, you know, I put the list, I put the date, exactly what we did, what dewormer we used, you know, any notes, make clear notes so that, and I just set it to the side. And on a nice rainy day when I have nothing else to do, I'll pull it out and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it all in the book. It doesn't really take me that long. But as long as I make good notes at that point in time, then I, I, I'm like, okay, I remember that, I remember that. I also learned that I should take the notes and not my husband. So, because sometimes he'll just say feet. And you're like, well, what, what about the feet? Were they bad? Did we trim them? He's like, I don't know. It was like a month and a half ago. So, you know, take good notes. Say, you know, she was kind of thin. She, you know, I had to deworm her. She had really bad eye score. Take good notes so that when you look at it again later, you're like, okay, I, I know exactly what I was trying to say. You can make those notes, put it in your records. So, you know, it doesn't have to all be done immediately. You know, again, I just set mine to the side. On a good rainy day, I come in and I, I update everything. The lambing season, I wait until the very end of the lambing season, and then I sit down when I can breathe, and I input all of my lambing's production information. This is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> this is us in the springtime. I just keep, I'm like, it's coming. All this rain, it's going to be pretty. <sighs> Not too bad. Um, some of our traveling, where the tractor and stuff goes, is, is obviously muddy, um, but we've got some pretty good-sized fields that they can overwinter in, so it's, it's not been too bad, except for when three inches of rain falls, and then it gets a little muddy, but then it, kinda, it dries up pretty quick. We've been lucky, and we're kind of on a hill, so most of it kind of slopes away from us. Any questions? I do not yet. I still want to. And I'm still looking. Um, so my summers, when I have my summers off, that's one of my goals is to try to find one where I can put all the information in. But at the moment, I have a big three-room binder. All my use have a print-off page, so I've got it in order. So I've got my information accessible. I've just got to find a program that we like. I think we're going to probably end up purchasing one, you know, one of the paid ones. And that way I don't have to worry about backing it up or anything like that because I'm not always the most computer savvy. So I'd rather know that it's backed up and kind of taken care of, and so.
Okay. Will that be a free one or will that be a paid one? That's not bad. That's that's awesome. Did they seem, did moms know which lambs were whose? Well, yeah, they did. They eventually figured it out, but it wasn't until they got to the point where they could tell which one was which. Right. Like, really, you know, after they could see which one was which. Right. Uh, so it's kind of yeah. So where, where we lamb at, so we specifically set aside a really, you know, a big 30-acre pasture um, for the reason so that they'll space out and lamb. Um, because if two or three go together, then you're over there and you're like, Who, which one's yours? You know, especially if they've had twins or triplets and they've got, you know, they're all kind of moving around. And there's a lot of risk to that because then maybe they don't get bonded to the right lambs. And um, if, if you know when things are due, it's really easy to kind of sort one or two off to the side so that they're not around the crowd. Um, Making sure you know when you put your ram out, you know, will help tremendously. Making sure, make sure they have some space. If you ever run into the instance, you know, where, you know, maybe two or three went at the same time, they're all kind of in the same area. Um, what we've done at MSU, because again, ours lamb in a barn, they don't have much room, is we'll, the moms will go to the jug and we'll start playing the game of like, which one do you want? So we'll set a lamb down and she'll either feed it or she'll kind of sniff it and push it away and you're like, Okay, would you like this one? Is this one yours? So sometimes we have to play the guessing game. Um, a lot, the older the ewes get, the better they seem to get. They seem to be a little more confident in their decisions, and they're like, these are mine, you know, and they might move away from the others. But if you can separate the, the mothers and then kind of, you know, offer them the babies and make sure that everybody is, you know, comfortable and happy, and then just, you know, keep a close eye, make sure that everybody continues to feed and, that, that would be what I'd recommend. If you don't have the room to let them kind of space out, then, you know, as soon as they, they have their babies, kind of separate everybody for a second. <laughs> so anxiety for a really long time. Right. Yeah, we were lambing in the middle of winter, so we had set a hay bale out, and everybody around the hay bale was just kind of looking at us. They weren't really paying attention to us. They were just looking at the side of the hay bale. So I was trying to figure out, like, can we do that? Do we need to do that? And they're just like, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so we're just trying to figure out, okay, this is working for you. Mm hmm And I've made those notes before. I've, you know, put lambs back to use, and I'll, I'll make a note on the page, like, I think this is hers. She took it and fed it, so we'll kind of see how it goes. So that way, if, like, for some reason, three days later, she suddenly pushes it away, and she's like, I don't think it's mine. Then I'm like, okay. Either you didn't volunteer it, or maybe it really wasn't, and maybe you're just being, you know, a really good mom for a little bit. But so I, I've made those notes before. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, if you're good with Excel, you know, all you got to do is back those files up to, you know, cloud or whatever backup <laughs> program you use. 
Um, but that way, if anything happens, you always have it. But Excel can do like some amazing things. So like on MSUs, one of the things that we added in was like the average daily gain, because we actually we're taking those birth weights and we're taking those weaning weights. Um, so we put a lot of influence. We kind of push for, for some pretty quick growth. We do a lot of creep feeding. Um, so we're very much, you know, looking is who's putting on the most pounds per day. Um, and those are a lot of the, the females that we want to keep on top of, you know, uh, you know, how healthy are they. We're not hopefully having to deworm any extra. You know, we always put some influence on those areas. But, you know, you can kind of cater your information to where you want to put your emphasis. If you're really looking at a lot of parasite resistance, you know, really keep track of those, those I scores if you know how to do it. Um, keep track of anybody that's getting dewormed outside of the normal routine. You know, that'll help you to kind of select for those that are going to do the best. One more question. Thank you.